What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's your girl, Miss Honey. We are here to do our weekly review for The Passage. Um, this is season one, episode seven. You are like the sun. Really good episode. Um, real quick before we get started, if you are new to my channel, I would love to have you as a member of the tribe. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that little bell next to it. Don't forget to forget to give me that thumbs up. That's like saying, hey, it's honey. <laughs> and of course, let's talk about it down below. Now, I really thought we weren't going to get any virals in this episode. We went a long time without seeing the virals. I thought it was going to be a whole team good type situation, right? So, um, we're going to talk about team good and team evil, but within each team, we are going to talk about the couples. Um, Brad and Amy are not together now. We know that because Brad was clunked over the head. Amy was taken back to the compound. Now, Amy and Lila, uh, I mean, uh, Brad and Lila are being taken to the edge of a cliff to be thrown off, to be shot and killed and thrown off of it. Never to be found or seen or heard from again. Like, who does such a horrible thing? Like, guilt is really, really, really evil. While they are together in the trunk of this car with their, with their hands bound, they are... Brad is flashing back. He's flashing back and thinking about his daughter, Eva. And this is how we learn what happened to Eva. He goes through the whole thing in his mind as they are traveling up to this cliff. Now, he comes in and out of the flashback and talks to Leela. And they formulate a plan to get out of the trunk. He has found a way. These are like zip ties. They're heavy duty zip ties, but he finds a sh sharp object where he can loosen the zip ties and they're going to pretend as though they still have them on. And then Brad's going to do his thing, karate chop, karate chop, karate chop, get them out of that trunk and get them on their way back to Amy. But in the meantime, before while they're talking and trying to get loose and he's passed out, he's thinking about what happened to Eva. Eva was a soccer player, their little daughter. I think she was like 8-ish, 10-ish. Her team won the, the soccer championship and they were all going back to, you know, some pizza joint somewhere and giving out trophies and signing, you know, their yearbook, their annual card or whatever with all their names on it, team members, so they can remember. Y'all know. It's a girl's soccer team too, so they're streamers. Like, it's, it's, it's party-esque. And Leela's supposed to do the party. But she got called into surgery. Brad is going to take her. Now, at this time, Brad's got a suit and tie on. He's got a regular old everyday desk job. Well, he's going to save the day and, and get Eva to the pizza joint and get all the girls there and get all set up before the bougie moms come with their daughters and give out trophies and streamers. And when they get there, the guy wants a deposit. He gives Eva his wallet to go back inside and pay. Well, she said, what about the markers? Cause they're gonna sign this big card, you know, this big end of the year type card. And he is like, I don't know anything about cars. He looks across the street. He sees a, a convenience dollar general type store. You know, he tells her go on inside and pay. He gonna go across the street and he's gonna say today and get the markers. He goes on across the street, gets the market, realize boom, boom, boom. I don't have my wallet. At the same time, oh, Ned well, a crackhead, <laughs> comes up. You know, he's all scruffy and got sores and everything. He got a gun. Uh, the clerk, who was being a jerk to Brad, throws his hands up. Brad takes over the situation because Brad is military. He says, all right, calm down, calm down. Go ahead and get the money out. Get the money out, sir. He's going to get the money out. You're going to get your money. You're going to be on your way. No problem. You, look, you, you seem like you might be a cop. No, no, no. No cops here. Just... Go ahead and get your money. Meanwhile, he see his daughter coming across the street. They bring him the wallet. She's going to come in the door. And when she does come in that door, the, the crackhead robber, who's very jumpy, turns and shoots and kills her. Right there in front of Brad. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. This is what happened 
to Eva, Brad and Lila's daughter. And this is one of the reasons why he is taking soul to Amy. He felt such conviction about saving Amy and not taking her back to the compound. See, because Brad has a secret. Now, the person that knows Brad's secret is Clark. Clark and Brad were best friends. We find this out during the flashback, too. Okay, Brad and Leela are heartbroken about Eva being dead. It's a horrible tragedy. She ain't working. He ain't working. He don't know why she want to go to work. Why she not home thinking about Eva as much as he... They, they, it's, it's, ta it's taking a huge toll on their marriage, huge toll on their marriage. And on top of that, he's been following the guy that killed Eva. Told the police and those he didn't know who it was, but he knew exactly what the man face looked like. Okay. And Clark, who was still inside the bureau, got the man's file, gave it to Brad. Brad just perused through it, played like it was no big deal, but Clark knew. Clark knew, said, what's the address? I don't know the address. What's the address? I don't know the address. He said, don't do this. Do not do this. You're going to regret it. Don't do this. You're going down a path. You don't need to go down. Come on, let's me and you. Let's go out. Let's let's laugh and talk and just try to get a little bit, a bit of, release a little steam. And Brad was like, no, no, no. I got some stuff I got to do. And uh, he know the man address. He tell Clark the man address. And Clark's like, please don't do this, man. You're going to regret it. Brad is so broken hearted. You don't understand. He deserves to die and so on and so forth. He, he cannot be swayed. Brad goes and finds the man. As soon as he sees the man, he shoots and kills him. When he shoots and kills him, he, oh. He has so much pain, anguish, anxiety, um, adrenaline, everything. When he shot that gun, it was like he fainted. He didn't faint, faint, but he had to sit down. Now, he didn't pop the, pop the cartridge out the gun, all of that. Well, Clark had been following him. Clark and a team. And they got him up, got him, got picked up all the bullets and the cartridges and all that stuff, cleaned up the mess. And Clark right then and there offered him the job at the compound. Come go with me. What I'm going to be doing is going to be life changing. It's going to be some real important work. I feel good about it. You can come, you can work, you can earn some money, you can get your mind off of things and we can get past this. This is how Brad got to the compound. Brad feels bad. He does feel bad about Eva and what happened to her. But the reason why he's trying to save Amy is because he couldn't save Eva, but also because he wants to absolve himself of the guilt and the pain that he feels from taking somebody else's life. He feels bad about that. He tells Lila as much. She asks him, did it make him feel better? And he said, no. Lila and Brad get to the cliff and the things go as planned. Brad chop, 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 swing. It was, it was a good move. Uh, gun, uh, fire, dead, 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 dead. Throws the other one off the cliff. Then he takes the gun out that he kills this one that's, that's still on top of the cliff and he points it at the water just in case somebody poked their head up because he know, he knows these boys right here won't stop looking for you if they still living. Now, um, when he opens the trunk up now, so he jumps out the trunk. They were supposed to jump the trunk and she was supposed to run, but he closed her in the trunk and handled it all himself. So when she opened that trunk and let that, her out that trunk, she was like, ah, she was beyond because she had to hear it all played out, play out. She didn't know if he was dead or if the people was dead, if she was next or what. When she got out of that trunk, she needed some fresh air. And she told him, what the hell is going on? What are we doing? How did we get here? So they can't take the car that the people brought them up there in because it's got a tracker on them. So they head on off across the into the forest and trying to find their way back, trying to find a vehicle to get back to the compound to get Amy. Okay. Meanwhile, while they walking, Clark has tracked the car that the, that the two dudes took Lila and Brad up to the cliff with. And he is there and he has grabbed the walkie talkie that fell off the dude that went into the water. Brad then took the walkie talkie from the dude he shot still on the cliff. Okay. And so Brad not talking into the walkie. First, Clark called the dude that went into the water. Lewis, come in, Lewis. Are you there, Lewis? 
Are you there? Lewis, are you there? Nothing. Screw it. I don't care who knows. Brad, what you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? You okay? Are you all right? I think you have a tail. Brad ain't saying nothing into the mic. He looking back. He, don't, he not sure. No one is sure if they can trust Clark. We're not sure. Okay? Brad's not sure. Let, last thing he remember, he got Molly whopped upside the head. And now him and Lila ended up in a trunk. So he can't really trust nobody. Meanwhile, him and Lila walking and they talking. They talking about the situation. She's trying to get him to understand, you know, that what happened to Eva wasn't his fault. He feels like it was his fault. He should have been able to do something. He should have made sense. So she said enough. You, you think you're going to claim all the guilt? You think you're going to claim all the blame? I didn't have to take that surgery. And the markers was in the car. I just forgot to put them in the doggone box. Every day I think about that. I said, no, no, baby, it's not your fault. She was like, well, how is it? It's not, how is it that it's not my fault, but it's not yours as well? You have to understand this thing just happened. Now, she don't know that he killed a man that killed Eva. She don't know yet, okay? Because just as they come out of that, it's not your fault, it's not my fault, embrace, Loman is there, cow, 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 put your hands up. He want them to get down on their knees. Put your hands up, turn, your, turn, 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 your, turn around, and get down on your knees. They get down on their knees, and they just know this is it until Clark walks up behind Loman and gives him two to the back. Boom, boom, he's down, uh, out, 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 you're gone. So... Clark talks to Brad. Let's him know, listen. I understand. I thought this was going to be a completely different situation. All hell is breaking loose back there. And I absolutely, positively do not want to be a part of this. Please let me help you get Amy out of there. Okay, and Brad was like, how, can I, how do I know I can trust you? And it was something about the way Clark looked at him. He just, I just, I said to myself, wow, I did not see this coming. I did not see this coming. I did not see Clark turning like this for good. He really gave me the impression. And he told Brad, he said, you know how it is. When you're given a mission, it's all about the mission. And that's what I was on. I was on some old get the job done type BS. So Brad and Lila ends up jumping into the Clark's trunk and he gonna smuggle them back into the compound. Okay. All right. And in the trunk on the way back to the compound is when Brad finally told Lila about the fact that he had killed Ava's killer. Nicole and Clark. Nicole is arguing her point against Gil's point. Her and Gil are, are in front of the, the big boss and they arguing the point. And Gil is saying, listen, this can be saved. Amy is a very viable guinea pig she is stronger and smarter and and way more gifted than all the other virals all right but nicole is saying we got to get rid of these virals we got to kill them we got to kill them all well is it true that if you kill one you kill all of them within the strain yes it is in fact true including amy yes it is in fact true now it's all about the money it's all about the, the bottom dollar. Gil say that Amy showed potential and she is potentially going to be the greatest weapon they ever had. So they put Gil in charge. You get rid of who you want to get rid of and reinforce and lock it down and get this junk straight. We got eight fatalities. We get to get this, get this thing, get this train back on track, sir. Okay. So Nicole leave out of that meeting. She already know. She already know they're going to let her go. She go out and she talk to Clark. And she tell Clark, I, listen, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. I'm not really sure how much longer I'm going to be here. But I'm going to tell you right now, it, it's not going to stop until he get everything he wants. And we're going to be out. I can't speak for you, but I know for sure I'm probably out of a job. And Clark is like, I don't like this. I haven't seen wall gas. I don't know what's going on. I got to find wall gas and get him back to Amy. We're going to get them both out of here. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of this. All right, then Clark goes to see Amy. He goes to talk to Amy, and Amy vets him out. I need your help. Tell me where wall gas is. It don't work like that, sir. It don't work like that. It just comes. It just happens, sir. And 
he tells her, I'm going to find the agent. I'm going to bring him back to you. And, and she said, "He is he okay? Is he in trouble? Oh, he fine. He fine. He's strong. And he's able-bodied. She said, he kicked your butt a couple of times or two. And he was like, that's true. And when he said that's true, she knew then. She knew then he might be all right. She wasn't going to full on let herself accept it. But the look on her face was like, hmm. Oh, you admitted it, huh? So, Clark tell her to sit tight. He gonna take care of everything, give her a bag of chips, and he go on. Okay? Anthony walks into the room. But we gonna talk about that. We also see Nicole helping Jonah. Jonah having a hard time with Elizabeth. Elizabeth has taken a tone, turn for the worse. And while they working to try to put something together to save Elizabeth, she got a super high fever. Unlike... I think what happened when they tried to kill Fanning sort of triggered and sent her into this early stage of turning into to one of the virals. But also, I think Fanning is pushing it along in a sense. Now, y'all know he pushed Anthony, but he pushed Anthony with pain and death and made Anthony feel like he had nothing else to live for. There was no humanly reason why he should want to be anything other than a, a vampire. Elizabeth is dying. They giving her Amy's blood and they've, they've switched it up, you know, and tried to elevate it and tried to ward off what's going on with her, how fast she's progressing into the vampirism. But it's only buying her minutes. It ain't buying her no huge amount of time. And so she bedridden. In and out of that, her and Jonas are talking. Her and Jonah are, are commiserating. They they clearly love each other. They got memories. He's telling her he's trying to save her. He also tells her why she was feeling so much pain earlier. It's because I tried to kill Fanny. Until I realized that all of y'all, everybody that's got his blood is linked to him. You know, he just comes clean with her. Meanwhile, the whole time he coming clean to her, Fanny is popping in and out of her mind. He visiting her left and right, trying to woo her soul out of her body. Go ahead and choose this. Oh, I think you might must be afraid of dying. Don't be afraid. It's not, dying is nothing but cold and emptiness and loneliness. If you choose this, you get to stay with me. Elizabeth tells him to unplug the machine. He said, no, I'm just going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep fighting. And and he, and he uh, she says, no. No, listen, 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 listen. I choose you. Okay? I choose you. I choose us. I choose love. I choose to leave this earth and die knowing how wonderful things were between us. Knowing how much you loved me and how much I loved you. I choose that over this blood sucking life. This is what she's saying. I choose you over fanning. Okay? He unplugs the machine and gets in the bed with her. And she breathes her last breath. Now, I was scared that she was going to come too on him. But you know, I done watched too much Walking Dead. Elizabeth is gone. She not going to be one of the 12. Brad is, and, and Lila are back at the compound. Clark and Nicole are now going to be a, a dynamic duo, I hope, because she's a doctor. And she's not going to be wanted there anymore. And Clark himself, he has decided he wants to be on team good now he was lonely over there on team even anthony and amy while we at it while um after clark leave anthony comes in the room and he talks to amy did he just give you chill there's a man coming talking about fanning and he gives her the hard facts she said you've changed he said you're gonna change too he tells her um we got to get you prepared. We got to get you prepared for what's coming because he's coming for you and we got to get you prepared. It's some scary stuff coming. Anthony takes Amy to find her book. Now, this is all, they're traveling all in their minds. They are in their own separate rooms, but they vamp sliding in and out of each other's minds and stuff. And so he's visiting Amy's mind and he takes her to, to see her book. Now, she can only see it. She can't take it with her because they're traveling in their minds. But while they're there where the book is, he tells her, what happened to you? What, what happened? And she don't want to talk about it. She almost starts crying immediately. Okay. 
I don't want to talk about it. You tell me what happened right now. You're you're running and you're crying, but you don't know where you are. What's going on? What's happening? You're trying to get home, but you don't. You're not sure where you live. Why didn't you know where you lived? And she's like, "You're being a jerk." And he's like, "Tell me what happened." She said, "It's my fault, all right. It's my fault. My mom is dead because of me." And he is like, "What do you mean?" Well, evidently, they moving umpteen times. Now, they done moved again. She in a new school system. All she wanted to do was go to school. Her mama take her to school, but they won't take her in because her mama forgot to register. So when they get back to the house, she tell her mama that she hate her. She hate her. Okay? And she runs out. Takes her book and runs out. So when we see Amy in the first episode where she's playing with the other kids and she goes to the diner and has something to eat and continues to read her book and then on her way back to finding where her home is, we see that she discovers her mother's body is being carried out because she overdosed. Well, all of this happened just prior to that. Just prior to that. All right, and we get to learn what happened with Amy. And Anthony tells her, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Your your mom was an addict. It was an overdose. It was nothing you could do about that. And your mom would forgive you. Of course, she would say that she's sorry. But you can't take this blame on because the man that's coming is so evil. He will take this guilt and pain and use it against you and make you choose to do something you wouldn't want to do. To be something you wouldn't want to be. Like you. Okay? And he was like, I'm trying to be better than him at least. Are you going to hurt people? You have to do some very bad things. Blood makes you want to do some very bad things. Okay, and he's got to leave. The reason why he got to leave because Fannin don't know he in there with Amy. Okay, he popping in to give Amy tea, to give Amy a heads up, to get her prepared, to, to, to give her the crib notes to this thing because he done already been through. And he knows if there's any guilt or shame at all, Fannin will use it against you to cause you so much pain you'll choose. You'll choose the choice he's giving you. Anyway, he goes on out. And Amy has to lay down. She has just had a long day. Now, Guild has been in there to see her, to talk to her. But we're going to talk about that. When she lays down, she <laughs> decides. He tells her, Anthony told her, you're more powerful than you know. You could go anywhere and you can do anything you want to do. And so when she lays down, she creates creates the, a space that's familiar to her and her mom is there and her mom is beautiful her mom is beautiful she don't look like a great kid she's got beautiful skin beautiful curvy woman she's cooking in the kitchen she's dressed nice you know casual she sits down she hugs amy amy is crying immediately when her mama turns around this is who her mama is in here and they hug and sit on the sofa and Amy tells her she's sorry. And her mama says she's sorry too. And she tells her, it was my fault. I should have registered you. And Amy tells her she didn't mean what she said. And she said, I know. I know you didn't mean it. And she said, she told Amy, she said, I wish I was there with you. Amy said, I'm afraid I'm going to become a monster. And her mama says, shoot. I know what kind of little girl I raised. I'm afraid I'm going to become a monster, but they say I'm special. Her mama say, you are like the sun, baby. You shine bright, honey. Brighter than the brightest diamond. Yes. Brighter than the brightest star. Yes. Okay. So, and then she gives Amy a book of matches. Amy said, what are these matches for? She said, to light your way. Knock at the door. Don't answer it. But I have to. She goes to the door and looks back and her mama's gone. She opened the door. It's Fanning. He dare to get Amy. He dare to get Amy because Elizabeth then chose Jonah and left him standing in his own vision, his own empty vision. Went back to Jonah and told Jonah to pull the plug. I'd rather die loving you. 
Okay, he mad. He got to get Amy now. He got to get Amy on board now because Elizabeth is gone, Winston is gone, and we need 12. It's a very chilling ending. Very chilling ending. So next, we already know it's going to be about the battle between Amy and, and, and Fanny. All right, so let's wrap up Team Evil. Deputy Guild, uh, Deputy Dingle. Barry, he'd already done shut off Nicole's, shut off her security clearance. Now, he's already shut off Nicole's um, security clearance. And he's already hired a new head of security. This guy has got big plans, okay? They're going to have two sides of the cage where, of the glass cage where two different people have to have two different keys on two different panels to open the cages up. To do anything. Two people got to unlock a lock. Everybody tra travels in pairs. The locks got locks. Okay. They finna lock this whole place down. They gonna cut the vamps feedings back. To to uh, cut it by two. Alright. So they gonna eat two less times a day. Hopefully this will save off some of the aggression. Right. This is humans thinking that they can somehow control the inhuman. But okay. Anyway. So he's working this plan. He goes to see Amy, and Amy tells him, you think you, you don't know nothing about this place. You think you uh, know what you're doing, but you don't know anything at all about what's going on around here. He says, really? Why do you say that? Tell me, tell me why you say that. She said, I don't know. And I don't know about that weird-looking mustache on your face. And she sends him <laughs> She sends him Pack it. I mean, he really feels like now that I'm here, this is all going to be under control. Like, <sighs> Fanning is busy popping in and out of Elizabeth's mind. She smashes his feelings hard to the ground. But we learn in this episode, thanks to Shauna, Shauna is asking Fanning, when we going to leave? When we going to get out of here? He said, I'm not going without Elizabeth. And she says, what's happening? Why do I have feelings for Richards? I was like, oh. So she feel a type of way about Clark. Okay. Just like Fannin feel a type of way about Elizabeth. They still feel love and emotion. Oh, this is a very interesting factoid. This is a very, very interesting tidbit to the to the to the to the dynamic to the plot of this show. We're going to see next week how this all pans out. But that's basically the end of the passage for this episode. You are like the sun. We see where Anthony is schooling Amy on how to get how to get over and under this whole fanning situation. Elizabeth has decided to choose life and die. We see where Nicole and Clark seem like they coming together to be a strong part of Team Good. I believe we're going to have two doctors, Jonah and Nicole, working on getting um, a cure or trying to get a handle on this thing medically. Clark and Brad look like they're going to be working on the security side. It looks like we going to have a good team between Anthony and Amy, but it doesn't look like Anthony may necessarily travel with them in this process. It kind of looks like Anthony going to be working to help Amy from a, from a remote position. That's what it kind of seems like to me. But we got our team good. All we need now is Lacey to come on in. And she'll be our logistics. And we'll be set to set to pop this war on off like it ought to be popped off. Okay. What does it mean that, that um, Shauna has feelings for Clark? What does it mean for Nicole that Shauna has feelings for Clark? <laughs> like... Ooh, ooh. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this episode. Put it down below. Um, if I missed anything, I would love to hear about it down below. Shout out to all of you guys. I am just full on impressed with how many details you guys are, are bringing up in this series. Just, just the little nuances that you guys are opening my eyes to. Man, it, it just makes this whole... Thing that much more exciting and I want to tell you guys I really appreciate it and keep it coming okay you guys that's it for this episode until next time honeybees mwah, mwah, mwah. I holla.